What's shaking bacon? Save money and eat better by cutting your own meat at home. But how much money are we really saving? Today, we do some math. Here we have a strip loin and we are going to calculate how much money we saved, if any, by buying this whole thing and cutting it up ourselves versus buying pre-cut steaks from the grocery store. So the weight on the tag says this is an 11.97 pound strip loin. We paid $10.98 a pound for a total price of $131.43. We are going to refer to the weight on the tag, the 11.97 pounds, as the purchase weight. Now we're going to open it. <laughs> now that we have the strip loin out of the cryo bag, we're going to weigh it again to get the actual weight. We're looking at right around 11 pounds, 10 ounces. So with the purchase weight being 11.97 pounds, which is right about 11 pounds and 15 and a half ounces, that means there's only a difference of right about five and a half ounces. Honestly, that's less than I thought it was going to be. In a perfect world, there wouldn't be a difference between the actual weight and the purchase weight. And in a perfect world, the tear weight that the store has for their scale would be accurate. And a tear weight is just the weight that is supposed to account for the empty packaging so that the final weight, the purchase weight, is only indicative of the weight of the meat inside the package. When you buy whole subprimals, because the cryovac packaging varies in you know size depending on the piece, the amount of plastic that's used varies. Getting an accurate tear for a whole subprimal can be really challenging. So there's usually just like an approximate tear that they would use for a whole subprimal versus a specific tear that they would have for say, a specific size tray that a steak would go in. I almost forgot to mention, if we take the total purchase price and divide it by the actual weight, we're going to get a new price per pound, which is actually what we paid for the amount of meat that we bought. So since the difference in the purchase weight versus the actual weight wasn't that much, it shouldn't be that different. So it was originally $131.43. Divide that by the actual weight of 11 pounds and 10 ounces, which converts to 11.625 pounds. So it'll be 131.43 divided by 11.625. So that gives us approximately $11.33 a pound, which is the new price per pound based on only the actual weight of the meat. So it's not that different from what we actually paid. Before we do any more calculations, we're gonna have to cut this bad boy up. Make sure to check the description below for the link to the video where we cut that strip loin into all of this. And now we're going to weigh everything. I'm going to weigh the steaks, the kebab meat, the stir fry, and write down all of those weights in separate categories. The overall weight of our edible cuts, and by that I mean the steaks, the stir fry, and the kebab meat that we got, so not including the fat and the trim, is eight pounds and 10.7 ounces. Or if we round up a little bit, 8.67 pounds. So if we take that amount and we subtract it by our original actual weight, the 11 pounds, 10 ounces, or 11.625 pounds, we get a difference of 2.955 pounds. So just shy of three pounds of waste. Now, personally, I will be keeping the fat to render down into usable tallow and the trim to throw into stock. Let us know in the comments if you're interested in seeing me making tallow or stock. Let us know, let us know. But the calculations we are doing will reflect if you're only interested in the steaks and such, the meat that we got out of the strip. That being said, if we take our original purchase price of $131.43 and divide it by the total weight of our edible cuts, the 8.67 pounds, we get $15.16 a pound. So that's the average per pound price we paid for just the steaks and such that we got out of our strip. Now, comparatively, that is a pretty average price in my opinion for New York strip steaks. When we were at Sam's Club buying the whole strip, I did take notice of their price per pound for their pre-cut steaks, the regular thickness, and their pre-cut New York strips were priced at $11.98 a pound. And then their thinly sliced New York strips were $12.48 a pound. So that's pretty normal to see thin strips be like 50 cents to a dollar more per pound than the regular thickness steaks. So if you're only interested in the steaks, it probably is more cost effective 
to just buy them pre-cut from big warehouse stores, at least the ones in my area. I don't have Costco pricing, but I do know that the last time I was at Costco, they had whole strip loins on sale for $8.99 a pound, which is the price I wish I paid, but you win some, you lose some, you get what you get and you don't get upset. Now comparing it to our local grocery stores where we do most of our everyday shopping, the regular New York strip steaks price is anywhere between $16.99 a pound and $21.99 a pound. So if we're comparing it to the grocery stores, we saved between $11.54 and $59.23 by doing this ourselves. And we got a variety of cuts, variety of thicknesses, and each thickness and each different type of cut we did would be priced differently at the store. So the thin strip would be priced differently than the regular, than the thick, than the kebab meat that we cut, and the stir fry. All of them would have different price per pound. Now you do have to factor in going this route of cutting your own meat does take more of your time. Your time is then the cost versus just going and picking up a steak from the store. So that's something that you have to consider and decide whether that's worth it for you. So it seems like for New York strips, we're kind of all over the board. If you do shop at big warehouse stores, it might be better for you to just buy pre-cut steaks. But if you do most of your shopping at regular grocery stores, you're definitely gonna save some money by cutting it up at home. That's the price breakdown. That was actually really interesting to find out how much money we saved. Now we saved a little bit more money because we're keeping the trim and the fat but I hope this gives you kind of a better idea of the possibilities if you want to cut your own meat at home. This is just one piece of meat. The cost breakdown of others will not be the same, as well as sales weren't a factor. Unfortunately, our strip wasn't on any kind of special, so that's something you have to keep in mind. We love the sale and we try to buy during the sale. That's not always possible. I would love to do this again. If there's a specific piece of meat that you would like a cost breakdown of to see really how much money we are saving by cutting our own meat at home, let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If you did, please leave us a like, a comment, and subscribe for more bartending and butchery content. And until next time. Take one for, um, excuse me, my burp. Intro. Go. Hello? Save money by cutting your own meat at home. Oh wait, no, that's not even our tagline. We just got a new scale. It's so fancy. <sighs> Borrowed this from my brother. He's an engineer, so he actually needs one of these in life. Make sure to check the Stir fry. Okay, I think we're good. I think I covered everything. I've never, I, I can't remember the last time I took this many takes for things. I can't remember the last time it took me this long, this, it's not, I haven't been down here for that long, but like, I cannot remember the last time it was this difficult for me to make it through a script. I don't know. I hope this is good.